I got wings. This isn't a Tampax commercial. Talk about my plow. So we're on our way to get this loader. Here to get the loader is right. <laughs> well, what is it? It's a Komatsu loader. 320W. I'm actually not too familiar with the Komatsu lineup. I've never heard of it in my life. I've run it for 10 world. minutes in the parking lot. Okay. I didn't mind it. It's very Spartan. I like Spartan things. I like creature comforts, but I also like shit that doesn't break. This is probably our guy. Yeah. 573 hours. 573. Is she brand new? Anyways, so this is their new model year. Old model year. I test drove uh, 270, mm -hmm. which is like an in-between size of these, in the new model year, and then a 250 in the old model year. And if you look at the back, the hood, like it comes up halfway up the window compared to this one. Yeah. You can't see anything. This is really bad. And then I also didn't like the controls. Okay. They're slightly different. So I'm much more a fan of this one. Even though it's older. I think the improvements they made were backwards. Anyway, I'll give you the keys. I'm gonna head back to the shop. Alright. Basically, we got our second loader. Boom. Second loader. Anyways, I'm waiting on my plows, which are supposed to arrive a long time ago. So where did this Love come it. in from? This came in from Montreal, uh, Metal Pless, uh, from Plessis, Quebec. It's between, it's between, Plessisville is between Quebec and Montreal, I believe. So how much did the Pless cost you? It was Buku Bucks. Buku Bucks. Lots. Uh, the price of a brand new car. Ow. Price Ow. of a mid-sized sedan. Honda Accord territory. Touring. Something like that. Poor wallet. That's a cheap one. <laughs> the other one's way more. The other one's the price of like... I don't even know. Drive forward and throw up at the same time. Drive forward. Good. I don't need you to move, just hit the button. You have to curl it? Why? What a stupid thing. Good. I called the guy, he said, yeah, I basically to disconnect the pocket. You gotta curl it all the way back, hold it 10 seconds, then it releases the buses. You have to do the same thing, put your headset to the same distance so you don't actually hit the switch and go off. I need channel locks. Go grab channel locks. Where's the channel locks? Oh, where? <laughs> I need channel locks. That's way too big. It's too big. Channel locks. Oh. I was expecting it to be the big one. Jesus, kids don't listen. None of you guys. It's hard to keep after you guys, you don't listen to me. You're cold, then you're hot. Someone rolled down the window I told you guys not to do. Hey, this is how good you guys listen, that window's rolled down. <laughs> oh, just take off one elbow, I don't need both. You're gonna take it in to get the things made. Put that on. And he man. That's what I mean. It's like, oh, Crap. Who that's put what that I on? mean. I don't want to snap anything, man. So, key goes here.
That's the dash. Now controls, a little bit different than the cat. So this right here, this red lever, that is your hydraulic lock out. And then, bucket six speeds down our car, that's your parking brake. Nice and simple. Rest of it, pretty straightforward. You got on here, operate same as a skid steer or any other loader. Curl, dump, and then down, you know. And this right here, that's your Prindle. The what? The Prindle. For your FNR and a loader. So forward, neutral, reverse. So some of the things right off the bat that I actually really like about the Komatsu, it's pretty quick. We've got it up to 42 kilometers an hour. There's no def, which is nice. And then if we pretend you're me, the visibility out the back is actually really good. And it's got a little, mirror there so you can check out what's going on it's got side mirrors rear view mirror another rear view mirror side mirror lots of visibility cab is relatively decent size very simple latch system close and open the door very chill so what we got on here three and a half yard bucket 2.7 yard bucket. So Kamatsu's got a larger bucket. So this is a fusion coupler and it's Cat's proprietary coupler. Whereas this, I forget the name of it, I'll look it up. This is basically your standard coupler. So on this machine here, the pin for locking the actual bucket on, the pin lock is right here. So the pin goes in. Whereas on Cat, this is more like a skid steer, so they have a pin here, and the pin goes in like downwards into the bucket. So it's more like a skid steer almost, um, and that's Cat's Fusion coupler. Now, if you look at size-wise, this is a 926M. We pull the badges off because we don't like stickers on our equipment. This one is a rental. This is a 320. W320. So this machine's about 34,000 pounds roughly. This machine is about 28 and a half, just a hair under 29,000 pounds. Horsepower wise, it's about 168, 170 horsepower. This is, I believe, 185. So this is a larger machine, even though it looks about the same size. That window, bro. Look at the lighting. Right up there. It's the only lighting on this machine. Then you got some headlights. These little headlights here. And on the back, all you got are the tail lights right here. That's all you got for lighting. That's kind of poo poo. What's up? <laughs> Let me know which one you like better. Oh, you want the door here. <laughs> you want the door closed? The seat's weird? Yeah. What? Expecting hydraulic seats. <laughs> it's air ride. Mans doesn't know about air ride seats. Um I did not steal the wiring idea from Dirt Ninja for this because he doesn't have a Komatsu. That's okay though. I think I like the cap better. But there are some pros with the Komatsu. First of all, with the Komatsu. We just kind of got it wired up for now. Um, so I use the factory switch still. This is the switch it comes with. It's a three position switch. It's not sexy, but it works, which is kind of the story of the Komatsu. Same kind of uh, transmission as the cat. However, there is no hydraulic uh, auxiliary on this joystick. They have an actual separate lever. So it's nice and it's not nice. It sucks because you can't control your actual boom arm while you're controlling the wing because it's separate, but it is still nice. And I feel like for the main mold board, the Komatsu is actually a little bit faster. I haven't played around with adjustments yet, but the mold board on the Komatsu is a little bit faster. So that's the main mold board. The other functions are very similar. These mirrors are actually they're moved further back and 
down lower, which you think would be great because of this front windshield. They got these cocked in seals here, so there's no actual obstructions for the front. But when you're driving on the road, these mirrors are actually right in line of sight of anything that's gonna be coming from you from another side. So these are actually a huge blind spot on the Komatsu. That being said, you actually have quite a lot more visibility out of the back of the machine, which is great because there's no camera. So visibility is way better in the back, way crappier in the front. Basically, we wired in a nice three-way switch. So this controls the solenoids for the plows. So bottom controls the left, all the way to the top controls the right wing and then in the middle controls your mold board or your main plow so we wired it all up in here i got a nice little cat connector to keep the wiring all oem and that's what we did so when i slide up the chair for operating it's just a simple switch for my finger on the armrest and then right back to the joystick so there's not much travel over the buttons and then your plow controls is just this roller right here and you just roll that up so forward it's opposite but forward is backwards and backwards is forwards you kind of get used to it after you've done it a couple times when you get the plow you just adjust your valves to the speed you're comfortable with and then that's how you operate here on the thing with this plow a couple of little tricks so you never want to plow with the wing straight like i have it now you always want to have the wings rolled slightly forward or slightly back so if i was back dragging i would roll both wings just slightly back like that and then if we were scraping we would do the opposite we'd roll the wings just slightly forward and obviously if we're pushing windrows we would close it but you never want to have the wings in a straight line you want to have it just slightly forward uh, and then for traveling, we just fold the wings back. Just like that. And we're ready to go down the road. And because we use 10 foot mold boards, you can easily fit down the road and not worry about traffic. So I'll show you while I'm in the cab, I'll show you that float feature. So as you can see, when we put the motor arm down, there's a point where the actual pivot on the loader doesn't change where the loader, if you look at the wing, the wing is not moving. And then if you look at either wing marker as we go down, see how it's way up because there's a lot of pressure. So if we relieve some of the pressure on the wing, see now it's level. So that's how you know you have good wing pressure. If you pick it up, now the wings fall, right? So when you're plowing, if you're scraping, say we're back dragging, We'll put the wing down and now right there that's where you want to be when you're plowing a couple of other great features about the cat is when i rip this wing back here i still have great visibility of where the wing is and if we compare that to footage of the komatsu the komatsu has these big square fenders which are obviously more economical to build but because they're big and square they are harder to see the wing edge so right now you can see the edge of that wing so a lot better visibility in the cat so that's one of the nice features of the cat that i've noticed so far the other nice feature about the cat and this is how i ordered this loader it's got the hydraulics right on the thumbstick which is convenient as well because you can also adjust for the loader arm while you're adjusting your wings which is nice Thank you.